just saw the six and a half minute or so clip of the killing of Mr. Rayshard Brooks, I believe was the Atlanta Police Department officer. <laughs> I'm speechless. Man's in the drive through he falls asleep, police come, get him out the car, they're standing here speaking to him. Uh, an officer is zoning in on him, you know, ask him, have you been drinking? He says yes. He's right, Mr. Brooks trying to say, man, I was here, I was at a party, a girlfriend told him I'm getting ready to go, I came here, I fell asleep. He said, well, you say you may have had too much, he says yes, early in, minute and a half in. Uh, he wants to know specifically how many drinks he had. The man told you he was drinking. Okay. Yeah, he's like, well, you guys woke me up. How you woke me up, got me out the car. Boom, 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 boom. He goes on to say, I'm not trying to cause no problems. I got three daughters. Uh, you can take, uh, lead a car here. They have it. They have his license now. Cause they called him by his name, Mr. Rayshard Brooks. He said, I can leave my car here. I can walk home from here. Keeps pressing him. Wouldn't you say you shouldn't be driving? He says, man, they have a yes. Well, how many drinks you had? Or one and a half? What kind of drinks? Like that matters. I didn't know we get DUI on specific kinds of drinks. So is it different if you're drinking beer? Is it different if you're drinking vodka? Is it different if you're drinking tequila? Is it different if you're drinking gin? Is it different if you're drinking Hennessy? I didn't know there were different types of being under the influence as far as alcohol. He admits it. Keeps pressing him. You know, you want to take a, uh, am I taking a breath line? The guy said, well, I don't know, man. I'd rather not, uh, you know. So you can tell in his voice, this is for my white contemporaries, that he's scared to try to figure out how to answer because he sees it's in the lead to something. See, and only black people, brown people, understand this discourse of conversation when it comes to officers because they're always trying to lead you into something and say something that would self-incriminate yourself so that they can be, in the words of this racist orange president, they can dominate. Right, they want to dominate. Step on their necks and prove their superiority. So how does being pulled over, being waking up out of a car, not even pulled over, waking up out of the car where you fall asleep, you get out, you say, I had to have some drinks. Uh, I ex man, my girlfriend, my kids, just when my kid's birthday party got three, he tells you, lead to you getting shot in the back and killed. Which means in the back you're running away. No, he didn't want to get. He didn't want to get put in handcuffs. You hear the officer. You never heard the officer say, "Get your hand off my gun." He said, "Quit grabbing my taser." Takes off running. That officer, the one that was grilling him, gets up, shoots him in the back, and kills this man. When the only charge may have been a under the influence alcohol when he ran why didn't you just pound the car you have his license go to his house pick him up tomorrow call him up the house tell him you need to turn yourself in how did it rise to the level of shooting this man in the back and killing him 27 years old three kids how did it rise to the level where you felt, officer, Mr. White officer man, that your life was threatened to the degree that it warranted you shooting a man running away in the back? Never said he hit him or nothing. <clears throat> I'm not even going to go into the George Floyd thing where it warrants 
getting lynched out in the open public forum is equivalent to a lynching. Eight minutes and 46 seconds on the neck over a $20 counterfeit $20 bill. How many people even know if right now, if you go look in your wallet, if the $20 bill you have right now isn't counterfeit? I don't know. They would have to tell me if it was. Because I, I don't know. I might have some counterfeit $5 bills, $1 bills in my wallet right now. How many people literally know that? And how does that rise to the occasion of being killed out in public like they used to do the lynchings and people come together and watch a man get hung. I'm not even talking about three, the few people that's got, that were uh, uh, found hanging from trees recently in Palmdale, Lancaster, and they're trying to say, uh, you would go find a big tree across the street from a library at a police station where I want to hang myself in public. Give me a break. It's time out for all this foolishness. So, I haven't slept since I've been up since 2 o'clock. This has been on my brain. It was 5.30 now in the morning. I have been blessed <clears throat> for 35, close to 36 years. Actually, a total of almost 38 years total of working in the field of electronics and engineering. Uh, and, and almost 36 of those years at one particular company. <clears throat> Uh, in Redondo Beach area um, but that hasn't excluded me the guy who has been blessed to obtain two degrees in that area of skill set that hasn't excluded me from getting pulled over in torrents dragged out of my car Recently in Redondo Beach, Manhattan Beach, taken out of my car. Asked point blank by a white officer, what are you doing on this side of town? Asked by an officer who saw me come out of a Chili's after I had a late night when it got me something to eat. Saw me, I look at you, you look at me, white officer. I leave, you leave, you pull me off and had the audacity to ask me where was I coming from. It hasn't excluded me. And in, <clears throat> in each of those occasions, the only kind of saving grace for me from not having my family put me in the ground was I showed my badge that said I worked at North of Grumman in the area. If I not had that badge, I don't know if I'd be here filming this video right now. You've heard my contemporaries, my white contemporaries, that we as black people have had either received the talk or we've had to give the talk. So what is the talk? So there's nobody uh, wondering what that might be. This talk is where we as African Americans, as black folk, as Negroes, have to self-calibrate ourselves to understand that we are the enemy of most police officers. And that when you encounter or come in counter, and when you encounter or come in contact rather uh, with an authority figure, a police officer, whatever, if you're in the car, hands 10-2 on the steering wheel, no sudden moves, when they pull you over, get the windows down already. If you can, without looking suspicious, uh, if you can't, if you don't have it right away, don't make any sudden moves. Tend to windows down. You know they're coming on your left. You know they're coming on your right. Only answer what you're asked. They say driver's license and registration. Do not reach for it right away. I've had this conversation. Okay. I've had to put this into play every time I'm pulled over. Okay. I ask the officer. I tell him my registration is if my glove box. Okay, no. I'd rather you officer on the far side, you reach in and get it. 
They ask, where is your driver's license? It's in my back pocket over here. Well, good. No, I'd rather not. I'd rather maybe can I stand out of the car or you, officer, can you watch me pull it out? And I've said, and I constantly say this, because I'm trying to get home alive. Now, you hear my contemporaries say, well, and when they watch certain things on the news, we well, must have been guilty. What was he doing? He doesn't have to be doing anything. What he's doing is black, being black. I'm not telling you what I heard. I'm not telling you what I've read. I'm telling what I have experienced. And all the time, hoping and praying that it doesn't escalate or get to a misunderstanding to where I get killed. I've been set outside my car in the rain. And in each of these four or five instances in the sound of the area where I was pulled over, guess what happened to me? Guess what the charge was? Nothing. Never wrote a ticket. All they said was, one man, the, the white officer in Torrance, get back to your side of the road. What the hell are you talking about? What I was thinking. Or, you need to go ahead and get out of here. Earlier in my life, my uh, driver's license had my mom's address, which was Compton. And later it's in the city where I reside in now, but because it's not in their area, they got to pull me over to try to figure out what are you doing over here? Because <clears throat> in their minds, I don't have the right to be just driving around their town like we back in the Western days. I'm for peaceful protests, anybody that knows me. But I understand why they're tearing this crap down. I understand. 100%. So, I'm, I'm serving notice here. I have a lot, I wouldn't say a lot, I have a fair number of friends from all different backgrounds and races, Filipino, Hispanic, Asians, whites, and all. But if you are of the mindset of those who think that what you've seen is right, you need to unfriend me. You need to not follow me. If you are of the mindset that uh, I'd heard, and I'm not even speak, I'm not even going to mention this lady's name. She's black. She's a conservativist. I'm not even mention her name because she's not even she don't even rise to the level of her name being mentioned to try to discredit a man who was uh, choked out and killed because you want to look at his past record and say he wasn't a hero he was this he was that I don't care what he was he didn't deserve to be killed so each person, you look back in your life, how many times, my white contemporaries, have you been pulled over and you were drunk? You had been drinking. You just came from the bar. You just came from your bougie restaurant. And never in your mind did you think when you were pulled over that you might get killed, dragged out your car, grilled to the point where they want you to say what they want you to say, and you might not go home alive. Never into your mind. We see videos all the time where you guys just cussing people out. Never forget the guy in Carolina that went to the church, sat in with a, a Bible study of a black congregation, sit there, Bible study, prayed with him, got out, shot and killed, I believe, nine people, if I'm incorrect. Uh, Lord, forgive me. And how did they take him into custody? No shots fired, then took him to Burger King for a meal. Now, He's in prison, but he'll live. And he took lives. Don't tell me about things are equal and justified. And if you're not doing nothing wrong, you shouldn't have nothing to worry about. Bull crap. So because now people have cell phones and, uh, and everybody's a reporter now, 
now you're getting ready. Now you are now seeing what has been going on for decades. And we still have people, even all the way up uh, under this uh, racist bigot of a president that worked for him and his cabinet, who are still saying, no, there's no racism. No, I, don't, I don't see it with the police. I don't. Well, we got a couple of bad apples. The system is racist. Yes, you have some police officers who have good intentions. You got some racist, bigoted KKK police officers as well. But the system of policing is racist. And it's time to change it. challenging you <clears throat> when you're watching these people marching in the street and protesting and all of this here's what I'm challenging you to do cut off the sound mute it and let your eyes tell you what you see now if you if you have sound up the projection is it's just a bunch of black Negroes out there tearing up stuff they just oh Cut the sound off. You see all kind of races. Why am I not seeing the white uh, counterparts and preachers and, and all those who have affluence? There are some. Let me back up. But why aren't they out there reporting, interviewing all the white people out there? Why are you out here? Interviewing all of the Hispanic, the Asians out here. Why are you out here? And listen to what they're saying. They've been awakened. They see the injustice. They may be in an interracial relationship or have true friends that are black. Not this. I got two fr black friends, so I can't be racist. Bill crap that we hear people say. At my job, you watching this and you, you, you follow me. We've been friends as far as Facebook. You can come to me and have some conversation if you want to learn about what the hell's going on. But don't come pacify me. Don't, don't, don't come, God forbid, tell me you know how I feel. Don't come try to just be nice to me because you're scared. You don't know if I might rise and be one of them crazy Negroes. Probably just keep it pushing. But if you want to talk, if you want to listen, if you want to learn, I'm an open book. I've always been. Anybody that knows me, I'm an open book. One of the hardest things to do for my counterparts to understand is to try to maintain professionalism while being black. Okay. I've been at my current company going on 36 years, as I mentioned before. God has elevated, God has a God has elevated me into what I describe as middle management or middle upper management. He has blessed me with many opportunities, not because uh, uh, I'm just a good old boy and, uh, uh, trying to fit in. Because anybody knows me, that ain't my style. I'm me from the time I get up to the time I lay down. My hats that I wear. I'm me. Okay. You, how often do you see me without a hat? Okay. Okay. Oh, matter of fact, this hat here. In Jesus' name I pray. Another one I just found. Anyway, that's me. 24-7. What comes up comes out. I treat everyone with respect. I do my best to maintain integrity. Uh, but at the end of the day, anybody that knows me, especially in my work environment, I ain't no punk. You're not going to punk me. You're not going to disrespect me. Do You're going to get to meet me. I ain't got to put my hands on you, but I'm smart enough, I'm articulate enough, I'm, I'm, I'm well seasoned to know how to address things. When I, and I know when you're trying to be sarcastic, I know when you're just trying to be a butthole, I know when you think you're speaking to me from a level of here, thinking I'm here, and I'm going to address it all. Anybody that knows me knows that. God has elevated me. But let me share something with you, my contemporaries. It is with not, it has never been without 
people hoping and wishing that I fail, lying on me in reports, saying things that aren't true. And I've been constantly, over my years, having to defend myself uh, for threatening people. I'm full aware of my voice, I'm full aware of my size, I'm full aware of what I, things I could do had I wanted to do. Uh, but in each and every case, God has come to my rescue. He's amazed me. He's come to my rescue. And he has lifted up a standard that no man could get over to try to conquer me. So I understand whatever happens in my life, it is God ordained, it is God sent, it is God allowed. But um, it's time for everyone, not just the black people, to speak up and out and against that which you say in public that you don't like. You know, that's general. We should treat everyone the same. Well, everybody knows that. That's in the Constitution says we should. The Pledge of Allegiance says we should. But we all know that it is not happening. So I need you to rise up and speak out against it, even if that's in your home. If that's how you feel. If it isn't how you feel, quit saying it. And just be who you are. <clears throat> I'd rather an enemy state that to me than you walk around thinking I don't know that you hate my guts. Because not of my intellect, not of what I've accomplished, simply because I'm black and you don't think I deserve that position because you'd rather see your daddy in it, your brother in it, your sister in it, your cousin, or any other white person in it. Enough is enough, man. So please, I'm begging you, before I have to do it for you, unfriend me if you have issues with what I'm saying, please. Won't even be offended by it. We can still coexist and work for the common goal of building hardware and doing those things, but that's where it ends. Okay? Enough is enough. They killed this man. This man admitted to having a couple of drinks. He admitted that he had. He told him he had three kids. He told him his girlfriend. He just left. He told him, you know what? Yeah, you're right. I shouldn't have been driving. I'll just walk home. All you had to do. Tell the man we're going to impound your car. We got your license. Go home. You're going to have to get your car out of impound. Or when he started running, let him go. Pick him up tomorrow. Do it all the time with white people. This, uh, and this is not, this is less of a thing as it relates. This whole system needs to be changed. And it's, the dominoes are falling now. It's falling. It's falling. And this bigot racist of a president not going to stop this train. You know, his thing is we got to dominate. That's, that's that old make America great again linger back in the 60s. Uh, when they were coming there to wild. We got vicious dogs. That's that old make America great again back in the 60s. We could bring out the National Guards to crush and dominate that. That's that old 1960s Make America Great again. In, America, in essence, Make America Racist again. Suppress minorities, especially blacks, again. Then in his mind and in those who follow him and vote for him minds, that is deemed what great again is. Say the de uh, devil's in the details. My heart is heavy. People are dying out here of the, the coronavirus and COVID uh, nineteen things and 
homelessness. All these, everybody's being locked up in the house. You know, here, we think about this. All the white people out there on the city hall and Capitol buildings out there, they protesting now. Going hard, screaming, cussing with guns and all this. And all this was to just open up the states. Then in Orange County, they, they just protest. Why do we got to wear our mask? I mean, they're going off cussing the whole night. Why ain't nobody pull out the guns and shoot them and tase them? They weren't, oh, they weren't violent. Those are just good people who are voicing their opinions. But when black people voice their opinions, we thugs. We're disruptors, and therefore, we need to be met with force. Tear gas. Rubber bullets, water cannons, vicious dogs, because we're trying to protest and voice our concerns. Wow. We're thugs. Everyone else is just peaceful, peaceful uh, and just being, oh, no, everyone there is. We're thugs. They're passionate. There it is. That's the word. They're just passionate people. But we're thugs, instantly thugs. Or not that something? I'm a man of God. I've been called. Uh, uh, but enough is enough, people. I am a black man. Born and raised in Compton. Went through the Compton school district system. I am that guy who graduated from Charles Birch Elementary School. I'm that guy that graduated from Enterprise Junior High School in 77. I am that guy that graduated from Compton High School in 1980. I am that guy that graduated from uh, then the riots to technology in Phoenix, Arizona in 82, 84. I am that guy. Uh, uh, that was with an associate graduated later years in 87, 88, somewhere in there from DeVry University with a bachelor's degree. I am that guy who has coached high school at Compton High and Westchester High School and been able to positively affect lives of young people of different race. I am that guy who has uh, had the ability, uh, the fortunate ability to train uh, athletes who have gone on the pros. I am that guy who has been blessed to work with uh, the likes of Lisa Leslie, who I admire, John Henson, who's in the NBA, Mike Holden, who UCLA went on to play in the NBA, and many others. I am that guy who's had the opportunity to speak to students in elementary schools and uh, junior high schools and high schools about career and versus perception. I am that guy who has had the opportunities to speak at commencement uh, ceremonies and universities. I am that guy who has been blessed to work for two years at a company called Amplica at Newberry Park and then at Northrop Grumman for 36 years and rise to middle management. Had a little article placed on me at the company about perception and speaking to just what's going on. I am that guy who uh, was called into the ministry and has been preaching for I don't even know how many years now and God has risen me up to pastor a church in Los Angeles at 51st and Broadway, the Paradise Baptist Church. I am that guy who has been gifted and blessed by way of song or spoken word or preaching to inspire and prayerfully lend people to a peaceful place where they can find solace and peace and joy in these troubled times. I am that guy who gets calls in the middle of the night, just like the other night when uh, uh, my family I love, my uh, friend Arlene Burns transitioned and her kids Armani and Cedric and um, twin or Arlena are dealing with hard times. I am that guy who answers that call and tries to pray for people. I am that guy who tries to treat everyone with respect and integrity on my job and uh, even though I have people who they say work under me, I just say work with. 
I don't have favorites, but I'm upright and I try to treat people honestly. I am that guy who has tried to help people along the way of life and be the best person, be the best husband. I'm not even perfect with that. Try to be the best stepdad to my stepdaughter, Denisha. Try to be the best grandfather to my love of my life, Tanner. I am that guy who tries to hold up and carry everything on my shoulders. Even when my shoulders and my back is hurting, I try to hold it up. I am that guy. I am the George Floyds of the world. I am the Raynard or Richard Brooks of the world. I am black.